in the decade power transfer as a new generation takes over from the old and with China's economy still growing at a prodigious rate, all eyes will be on those set to lead the country over the next decade. The transfer will see a near total change in China's top leadership with incoming Xi Jinping expected to form a new fifth generation government. His priority will be to get the country's economic engines running at full speed after a, a slight slowdown in recent years. By 2017, it is expected that China will overtake the US as the world's largest economy. The economic rivalry comes amid a battle for influence in Asia between the two. Beijing-based correspondent Shannon Van San says foreign policy is another issue the new leadership faces. The Obama administration announced a pivot to Asia last year, which means an increase in military spending and military, military resources by the United States being focused in Asia. So that's very significant. And China is really increasing its own military spending. It's, it's developing its military. They've appointed a couple of a few senior diplomats in charge of China's foreign affairs. One person who's been the point person on Japan for a long time, another person who's very familiar in dealing with the United States. So um, how this will affect Xi Jinping's um, leadership going forward, particularly in terms of these territorial disputes. China has been very assertive and it's sometimes even bellicose over the last year when talking about these territorial disputes and they seem to, to really want to show their strength in terms of talking about these issues. It's just increasingly China has the military strength now to back up um, some of these more bellicose claims and, and territorial claims in, in these parts of, of Asia. Now, the new leadership is to be voted in on Thursday at the 12th National People's Congress. But for now, uh, we can discuss the power transfer with Professor Joseph Cheng at the Hong Kong City University. Thanks very much for your time, Mr. Cheng. Um, now, China's growth over, over the past decade has been quite stunning, hasn't it? But uh, is that something that can be maintained? Well, China now aims at an annual growth rate of about 7% plus or minus one in the coming five to ten years. This should be manageable, mainly because the high growth rate areas of China has been moving from the coastal areas to the interior provinces. China's population is still relatively poor, so there's considerable room to uh, raise their consumption, and therefore domestic consumption can still be a very important source of economic growth. But obviously, China's, China is quite dependent on foreign trade, and therefore, China's growth may well be affected by the general state of the global economy. And at the same time, China is aware of the limitations set by its declining labor supply, environmental degradation, and the supply of energy and raw materials. Now, there are a number of uh, domestic problems too, aren't there, uh, facing China at the moment? Wealth inequality, corruption, pollution, to name but a few. Do you think that the, um, the country's slow-moving bureaucracy can actually tackle all of those? There are problems. Obviously, uh, the bureaucracy needs to absorb more highly educated cadres, uh, including those returning from overseas. The problem is not so much the general competence of the bureaucrats. After all, uh, the Carter Corps uh, rewards, uh, has been rewarded very well, and there's no shortage of talents in China. The real challenge, actually, is the issue of corruption, uh, departmental, departmentalism, as well as the fact that, that the local authorities may not follow the policy guidelines from the center very honestly and very effectively. So uh, these are the challenges of the bureaucracy. And what about the military? Because we've seen a double-digit increase in military spending. What, what does that tell us about Beijing's priorities? Double-digit growth uh, in military expenditure is expected to be the routine, partly because China has to spend more in terms of remuneration for the military, and this has been absorbing a very large chunk of the military budget. And at the same time, uh, certainly China has been spending a lot on research and development. As China moves from the stage of buying advanced weapons from abroad to the development of 
uh, uh, of the state-of-the-art weapons on its own. So the research and development budget is expecting to grow rather substantially as new weapon systems are already on the pipeline and ready to be deployed. And is it fair to say at all that the increased spending uh, on the military is in fact a reaction to America's increased presence in Asia? Not exactly. I think this uh, increase in military expenditure is a natural trend for the reasons that I explained uh, uh, just now. And at the same time, certainly uh, there's a lot of room for improvement. For example, China has yet to build up its Blue Water Navy to protect its uh, vital trade routes and, uh, and its uh, merchant marine. Uh, so um, given the fact that China aims to become a major power and be in a position to defend its territories and its over overseas interests, uh, it will continue to spend at that kind of rate of increase without any substantial jumps in military expenditure, I expect. In, in fact, the Chinese authorities probably understand that the American military spending uh, is very much limited by the fact uh, that uh, the Obama administration has to cut its military budget because of domestic financial difficulties. Okay, thank you very much for your thoughts there, Professor Cheng. We do have to leave it there. Thank That's you. Professor Joseph Cheng at the Hong Kong City University.